see data? I told you everything is just fine. I know you're upset about a spot, but you'll get over it in time. You just have to get used to your emotions, that's all. Aren't you looking forward to tomorrow? I do not know, Geordie. I have not been able to concentrate on anything in the past 63.5 days. Sometimes, I wish I had not asked you to install the emotion chip. Data was not telling Geordie the whole truth, though. In between the wild mood swings, the suicidal thoughts, and his short fuse, there was one thing that he had been able to concentrate on. The new emotion of lust. Luckily, Data had synthesized uniform trousers in a couple of sizes too big. Nobody saw the expansion in them now. But they didn't help his discomfort any. Data inserted his hand into the nearest EPS power tap, slightly burning his outer covering. Damage routines pounded their messages into his positronic brain, temporarily overriding sexual functions. Wonder what's causing that power drain? You know, Data, I don't think they do enough maintenance around here. They seem to have these power drains pretty often. Maybe we should give them a hand. Of course, Data knew what had been causing the power drains. Actually, Geordie, I have a few things to finish before we transfer to the Enterprise tomorrow. I shall meet you there. Okay, see you tomorrow, Data. The deck area of the starbase was quite similar to that on the Enterprise. Deanna Troy's office appeared, as does Deanna's image. Computer, lock holojack 4J. Privacy lock, engaged. Hello Data, what can I do for you today? I am in need of advice. You can tell her. It is just a program. Nobody will know. I do not believe my sexual programs have been functioning normally since the emotion chip was installed. In the last 8.9 weeks I have had sex with 51 beings of different species and sexes. They all appear to enjoy the experience. However, I cannot achieve orgasm. Don't worry Mr. Data, I'll help you with that. Indeed, this counsellor was programmed to be horny. Somehow Data doubted this program would help him. Then suddenly, the emotion chip took a random thought, altered it, and threw it back to his consciousness. The image of a battle. Computer, cling on short sword. It shimmered into view at his side. Grabbing it, he quickly sliced the image of Troy from its left shoulder to the right side of its abdomen. As she vanished, servos in... Data's groin contracted slightly, bringing him just a hint of relief. Data ended the program 
and left the holodeck. He started thinking about what was wrong with him. He was acting just like Law. Before he realised what he was doing, he had climbed six decks. He got out and wandered the corridor until he saw a sign. Cybernetics Lab. Maddox. Two realisations hit him at the same time. Maddox was probably the only one who could help him. And he hated Maddox more intensely than he had thought possible. He read through several memory chips on Maddox's desk in the vain hope that they might tell him something useful. Computer. Location of Dr. Maddox. Dr. Maddox is not aboard the Starbase. What? Where the hell did he go? Hell is not a known location on Starfleet maps. With an incoherent shout, Data trashed the desk. What a rush he was to let his emotions control him. He was feeling a great sense of power, joyfully punching holes in the equipment with his fists when he heard the security alarm. With his superior intelligence and speed still unhindered, he scratched a fine line in the floor panel with his fingernail, then kicked it so it broke exactly in half. Descending under the floor, he lowered the panel back down again, knowing the fine break would almost be impossible to see. Data chuckled. He, of course, had left no hair, skin cells or other DNA traces. As he entered his quarters, however, his mood plummeted. He turned around to stare desolately in the mirror. He saw in his hand a new experimental nano-cutting tool. He must have grabbed it from Maddox's lab. He could remove the emotion chip. With this cutter, he would be rid of all his problems permanently. Of course there was a chance. Not calculable. Insufficient information that he would burn out his whole prosotronic net. But then he would be rid of his problems too. He activated the cutter. Data, are you okay? Hold on, I'm going to activate the visual cortex. He blinked several times as his eyes got used to the light. I'm glad to have you back, Data. What has happened? Well, as far as we can tell, someone attacked you a couple of weeks ago. It was right a after somebody trashed Maddox's lab. They apparently stole a nano tool from the lab to disable your neural net with, then left it under your bed. Not too smart, but they didn't leave any fingerprints or DNA. None of it makes sense. Don't you remember anything? He should ch tell Geordie. Maybe be deactivated until his damage could be assessed. Then something in the back of his mind spoke up. A desire to live, not to be deactivated. No, my memory record for that day seems to be corrupted. Are we on the Enterprise, Geordie? Yeah. I must locate my belongings and find my quarters. As long as you certify me fit for duty. Okay. Sounds like you're back to your old self. He was informed that his personal effects were already in his quarters, so he went there. He felt almost as calm as before the upgrade had been installed, except for a vague dislike of organic beings. He was confident that Starbase security would never find out what had happened. And it was a total impulse on my part. I fooled them without any thought. A smile came to his face. The emotion chip is still working after all. He retrieved two holograms from his case and he activated the one with Tasha and immediately the swollen feeling came back to his groin. Oh shit, I still have that problem. Data to Dr. Crusher. Crusher here. Do you have time to meet me? Beverly couldn't imagine why Data would want to see her. When he walked in wearing civilian clothing, she was even more interested. Data generally wore his uniforms at all times. As he sat across from her, it occurred to Beverly that he had never looked better. She found herself getting horny. Beverly, there is something I have wanted to tell you ever since I received my emotion upgrade. I am strongly attracted to you. 
She followed meekly all the way back to her quarters. They walked in, and Data dropped all pretense of romance in her. He slowly peeled off her uniform, then his clothing, revealing his amazing anatomical gifts. Data, could you be a little more romantic? Data, stop it! That hurts! He wound Beverly's hair tightly in his hand, almost crack. He grunted with the first contraction, loosing a powerful burst of cum into her lifeless body. Where is that neural stimulator? I know she keeps one here. Oh, there it is! The device was already designed to send out a powerful current of neural energy. With a few cross circuits here and there, it could shoot out a fireball, strong enough to vaporize most of Bev's body and incinerate the sabotage circuits as well. As data worked, he started to whistle without realizing it. Then he noticed he was whistling, and pretty well too. He was back in his quarters and in uniform before the red alert siren sounded.